So I absolutely love my Fire TV stick and its little handy remote. But what I don't like is how greedy this little remote is when it comes to batteries. It tends to suck them dry quite quickly compared to normal TV remotes. So my solution was to add uh, rechargeable batteries to it. But I went one step further because uh, we have rechargeable batteries inside already. But I what I decided to do was to add a charging socket, a micro USB charging socket, so that I could simply plug my phone charger into it and recharge it when the batteries are flat. Or I could take this, uh, since it's USB, plug it straight into the telly, the telly's USB port. So in this video, I'll show you how I did it, so you could do this hack yourself if you wanted to. And uh, you don't have to buy this greedy little remote and feed it batteries all the time. So let's see how we did it. Now I was thinking of um, adding the charging port. It can be either be added in the front here or in the back there. Now it probably makes sense to put it in the back. Trouble is, I need to find a way out to open this thing without breaking it. Or at least open it in such a way that it can be glued back together. But I think here's a nice little spot to put a charging socket. So let's see if we can open it. Now in order to open your Fire TV stick remote, you need to um, take the battery compartment off. And um, you need to somehow the ring needs to come off because there's two screws underneath there. So you can use one of these opening tools. If you don't have one of them, you can use a, a blunt knife from the kitchen. But uh, this little tool works rather well. You can slide it underneath there. And there's a clip right there in the corner that if you're careful, you can unclip it and then work your way around. And then this comes off. Beware of its orientation because you can put it on the wrong way around. It's not uh, the same size all the way around. These Some of these um, little cross uh, pins are actually bigger than, than the other ones. They look almost the same, but they're slightly different. Be careful not to break your little clips. So put that aside. And then you'll notice there's uh, two little screws there. And they'll have to come out. Otherwise, you can't take the... Um, remote apart. Also this little disc is loose and that um, that needs to be put back as well. And then what you need to do is you need to work your way around with uh, your little opening spudging tool or knife. Carefully go in there and find the clips and pop, pop the clips open. You will inevitably, I mean the batteries need to come out as well. need to take the batteries out. Um, you will inevitably break some of the clips. They've manufactured this thing in such a way that it's extremely hard to open. Um, but it doesn't matter. You can still open it if you're careful. Even if you break a few clips, you can always put a little drop of super glue on, on the clips and when you put it back together and it'll be just fine. Um, it's quite hard to open. There are other videos on YouTube that um, show you how to do it and you're welcome to watch them. Um, I struggled to open this remote and um, I didn't film it because it was a bit of a nightmare but I'm showing you how I did it. So first I solder two diodes in series and then um, I connect a, a resistor and a diode in series and the general idea is to get uh, the forward voltage drop of three diodes connected in series and a resistor for current limiting. And that's my charging circuit essentially. I will connect um, the uh, two diodes to the one battery terminal and the resistor and the diode to the other battery terminal. And that'll the effect of that is to have three diodes connected in series with the resistor for current limiting. So the diodes just drop the voltage from 5 volts till about three volts thereabouts 
and the resistor just limits the charging current. So it's a very simple charging circuit really, but uh, perfectly adequate for uh, just uh, slowly trickle charging uh, nickel metal hydrate cells connected in series, two of them. So after carefully unclipping the case, the main board should pop out quite easily, um, giving you access to the battery terminals. And um, I just uh, soldered the resistor and the diode to the positive terminal and the uh, two diodes connected in series to the negative. So before connecting the charging port to the uh, diode and resistor on the battery terminals, I cut a little channel in to run the wires down to the charging port. It's probably not necessary, but it's nice to have a little channel for the wires to sit in. So the next job is to solder the positive and negative wires to the USB charging socket. Uh, these little charging sockets are uh, quite handy. They're not, they don't have any data pins on them, so the positive and negative are spaced quite far apart, which makes it easy to solder wires onto it. It's not too fiddly. And um, I just pre-tinned them so that it, they could just easily be tacked on with a soldering iron and uh, used my little helping hands. So now it's time to decide where to mount my charging socket. And I think uh, the front of the remote control, there's enough space in the casing to put it there. And I can run the wires from my little channel that I cut in. And I think it's going to work just fine. I can also determine the length of the cables and where I can cut them so I can solder them on so there's not too much extra slack on the cables. Now I'm just looking closely to see if everything's okay and there's no shorts. And then we'll proceed to make a hole in the front of the case for our charging socket to go in and I'll just use my handy Dremel tool for that. So as you can see the socket fits rather snug and now we need to um, plug it into the USB socket to hold it in place and in that way we can gunk a whole bunch of um, hot melt glue around it to hold the socket in place copious amounts the more the better I suppose. And um, that uh, let that set and then um, we can try to assemble the whole lot see if it all fits together now you start by inserting the little metal cap on the spring terminal and then carefully popping the spring terminal um, back into the board position uh, this can be very fiddly and the cables um, they just go all over the place you have to kind of guide them with a the screwdriver to sit in the channel but with a bit of effort, I managed to get it all to sit nicely and it sort of clicked back together like it should have been. Now when I opened the remote, I did break a few clips and this is almost unavoidable, but it's not a big deal. You dab a few little drops of super glue on the broken clips and um, it, it just prevents the remote from falling apart and it holds it all tightly together and you don't notice anything once you put everything together. So um, it's probably a good thing, a bit of super glue. Now it's time to uh, clip it all together, make sure all the good clips still click together tightly. You can wrap some tape around it for the super glue to set, but in my case, everything lined up perfectly and clipped together quite tightly. So I didn't need to wrap some tape around it or an elastic band could probably work as well if you want to hold it tightly together. Don't forget uh, to put the two little screws in that go underneath the ring they actually pull the board tightly in place so they're they're quite important next uh, we'll stick the center push button back in make sure that it lines up it's got a little cross at the bottom so it's in the correct position and um, then uh, we'll put the ring in also making sure you note of um, its orientation and it should just pop back in place the little clips just simply just click in place so I'll just give the buttons a, a test to see if they all click and if everything feels good um, by pressing all the buttons individually and everything seems fine. So now we'll pop some rechargeable nickel metal hydrate batteries into the battery compartment. These are IKEA brand ones. Now nickel metal hydrate is perfect for this because um, it's not so fussy of being uh, trickle charged constantly. So they should last a long time and they don't need a fancy charging circuit, just some current limiting. 
which is perfect for our remote. Now these batteries uh, should be fully discharged so we can check the state of charge on them. I think um, I think the two of them together probably give us about 1.5 volts so they're quite discharged. So we'll stick them on charge and then um, we'll see how much the battery voltage comes up to. 2000 years later. So they've been on charge for a while now and uh, we're just probing the voltage and we're getting about 2.87 so about 3 volts so just just below 1.5 volts per cell that's not too bad I'd say they'd fully charge for nickel metal hydrates and uh, now we just need to test it on the fire TV stick on the TV see if it works so now that it's fully charged I think it's time to give it a test on the TV so let's unplug the micro USB cable and uh, let's give it a try on the TV Let's try one of my videos on YouTube. It seems to work just fine. Let's try skipping forward. Skip to the end of the video. So the button seems to work just fine. So quite happy with the result. Um, this is a micro USB port. I suppose most phone chargers now will start to use um, a USB-C, but lots of things still use um, micro USB. So I think um, uh, for now this will still work, but I can do it with micro USB as well. Anyway guys, uh, let me know what you think um, and um, please like and subscribe to this channel and then uh, you guys can see more of my videos. and. Um, let me know what you think of this video. Leave a comment, please. And as always, thanks for watching my project box. I really hope to see you soon.